I've always enjoyed cooking. Something I've followed all my life. I just enjoy it. it. Basically, it's the satisfaction you get when you feed people. I get that from my grandmother, because she was a great believer and there is no such thing as a family recipe. You run into people who, okay, that's my recipe, you can't use it. And that's one of the silliest things in the world because there's way more people in the world to feed than what you can cook for. I think about my grandmother all the time while I'm cooking because of the way she raised me and uh, what she meant to me. I grew up down south of Mississippi in a little town called Noxipeta, Mississippi. I think somebody told me they tried looking it up on the internet. I don't even know if there's enough there to put on the internet. Grew up in my grandmother's cafe. And uh, basically I started working when I was eight years old at the cafe. And uh, I always loved cooking, so I ended up doing a lot of cooking. A lot of fried chicken, a lot of gumbo, uh, a lot of seafood. And then, like I said, everything else pretty much fried. <laughs> In 1978, I went to work for the railroad and ended up here in Chicago chasing the union job, which in the early 70s was an extraordinarily high-paying job. And I uh, came up here as a train dispatcher and I uh, was working off and on as a maintenance of weight and I worked as a cook on the derrick. It's kind of wild because on the railroad, it's uh, like probably like working on a ship. Everything is doing this now constantly you can't overfill a pot you can't underfill a pot i mean it, it's just put it this way you don't need to stir soup <laughs> railroads are closed shop you can't work on a railroad unless you belong to the union and everything on the union is strict seniority and you know they cut a job off here and it ricochets all the way down until eventually it gets to the lowest person and I worked there until I got cut off on the railroad seniority bus. At the time, well, I was married, and uh, it's still too painful to talk about. I'm not going to discuss my wife, but my daughter is my pride and joy. When my wife got sick, I sent her back home, and uh, she was raised by her godfather, and he knew what I was going because it took me seven years uh, with my wife fighting cancer. And it was a point of what was best for her. And, uh, and I blew up after my wife died. And uh, just left her where she was at because the environment was a whole lot better. I was addicted to heroin for seven years. What got me involved in my addiction was the seven years I spent uh, taking care of my wife and watching her die. And uh, to be honest, at the point, I was willing to die at the same time. So it was just a big shotgun kick to the head. And that's what set me off. You have to uh, put everything in perspective. You don't really know who to turn to for grief. So you reach out for something, and I just reached out for the wrong thing. At that point in time, once you get addicted to something, you don't care about anything else but trying to find your next uh, fix or whatever you want to call it. And you have to realize that a person's talking about the fact that they don't really care about food, they don't really care about clothing, they don't really care about housing. Uh, you basically don't care about anything else. And uh, I became homeless probably three years into my addiction. It took me about seven years to realize that it was a dead end street and I just need to do something different. And that's why I went into the ARC over at Lincoln Park. You can really find yourself through an entity such as the Freedom Center. Uh, with everything that is offered, the different programs that they are offering, you know, it's, it's nothing but opportunity. The Salvation Army Harbor Light Center really takes a holistic approach. We are out on the streets working with the homeless. So we're an ongoing program that takes you from the street through substance abuse. We have a jobs program to help with the employment angle, and we're trying to get them to come in and do something to change their lives. What the Salvation Army provided me with was a place 
to sit back and count up the blessings that you have and what you've lost. You can get a good perspective on your life. Yeah, I was living in a tent uh, right here against the wall at the corner. So what was a typical day like for you then? I'd usually go over in the morning and try to get a cup of coffee at the hospital. And uh, basically, we're just trying to stay warm. Mm -hmm. After I got uh, clean and straight at the Salvation Army, the only thing I wanted was a job, plain and simple, so I could get off that tent on Wilson Avenue, plain and simple. That's it. Thomas was a gentleman that uh, he, he, he's just very hesitant. Um, if he didn't know you, he didn't really want to talk to you too much. It took me a while to actually engage him and, and just having conversation, simple conversation, to where I just continued to ask the question, uh, Thomas, what is it that we can do to help you move from this place to a better place? When he came here, he was very anxious about paying his bills. He had paid his way all his life and he did not want to accept charity. And that's when he applied for the cook position. She said, well, what are you doing? I told her I'm a chef. And she asked me, well, how do you make green bean casserole? And I explained to her how I would make green bean casserole. And she said, ooh, we need to hire you. <laughs> Thomas's success story for me represents just that ability that, that of hope. It teaches me uh, to not give up on people. It teaches me to really put myself in a, in a situation where, where I could be used to help an individual change their situation. I've always been taught you give back no matter how bad your blessings are. No, it's just the way I was brought up. That's what I did. My grandmother never turned anybody down to eat. She didn't care whether you could pay for the meal or not. I've still got two shoe boxes full of bills from the people in the surrounding county, that, and they're still coming in and paying off the bills, even though she's in a nursing home with Alzheimer's. It's like the Salvation Army truck on Wilson Avenue and Marine Drive. I used to eat there when I was unemployed, and uh, it's satisfying to know that I'm responsible for the soup that's on the truck now, that everybody, including people that I know that are still out there homeless, are eating off of every day. Basically, all I needed when I came here was a job, an opportunity to prove that I could still take care of myself. Everybody's worth that opportunity. I think that's your responsibility as an adult to provide them the chance that they can, if you can, to prove it.